In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, in this holy season of Lent, we have followed Jesus into the desert and grown closer as his companions. Today in our journey, we receive a blessing in our community as a new member comes to walk with us. Let us share in the joy of these parents, Wesley and Wanda, who bring their daughter into our community today. Let us welcome them and our, our littlest friend with our whole hearts. And so I ask you, Wesley and Wanda, what name do you give to your daughter? Audrey. Audrey what? Middle name. Audrey Uskategi Kayabiar. Audrey. And, in, and on behalf of Audrey Uskategi, what do you ask of God's people, the church? Baptism for her to be baptized. Wesley and Wanda. Excuse me. Wesley and Wanda, you have asked to have your daughter baptized. In doing so, you accept the responsibility to raise her in a life of faith. It will be your duty to teach her to keep God's commandments as taught by Christ through love of God and care of neighbor. Do you understand clearly what you are undertaking? Yes. William and Kinsley, are you ready to help your godchild and these parents in their journey of faith. Members of this community, on behalf of the whole church, are we ready to support these parents and godparents in their care for this child by modeling the love of Christ and welcoming her, welcoming Audrey, into our family of faith? We are. Amen. Audrey was Paragi. The Christian family welcomes you with great joy. In its name, we claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of the cross. I'm going to ask the deacon to come with me. We claim you for Christ. And I would, I would ask the parents and godparents to also mark her, just a little sign of blessing. And so let us pray. O oh God, who has commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, 
that with spiritual sight made pure, we may all rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now I invite all to be seated to listen to the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design 
and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard of this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. In November 2019, when my mom had passed away, I remember racing to the group home that she was staying at in Northwest Phoenix. I wanted to see her one last time, of course. And when I saw her, I saw an incredible and immense look of peace on her face. And her eyes were closed, but her head was tilted, looking upward. And it appeared as though she was gazing at something. And perhaps in her last moments, she had thanked God for a life well lived. Perhaps she had found herself reunited with God and with all who had gone before her. It was just a profound experience in that sadness to see the overwhelming peace on her face. And I wonder in the transfiguration if we would see that same look of peace on Peter, James, and Andrew, Peter, James, and John, as they encountered God, as they saw the, the 
brightness of the sun with Jesus, as they saw the dazzling white in Jesus. But of course, they were startled to begin with. And Jesus says to them, do not be afraid. They were startled. And they had good reason to be startled. If, if we skip ahead just one chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, we see that Jesus is very much aware of his upcoming death, and he shares that news with Peter. And of course, Peter is in denial, as, as he often is. And Jesus says to Peter, not only is my death coming, even though I might not will it, but I will accept it. And it might be a possibility for those who follow me. Christian discipleship is not an easy endeavor. And yet, as the story goes on in the transfiguration, we, we see the light of Christ and we're reminded in the second reading today, as Paul writes to Timothy, that Christ destroyed death in his dying and rising, that Christ is our strength, that greed, that fear, that selfishness, that hatred, these are no match for the immense love and compassion and forgiveness of our God. And I think my mom knew that. Towards the end of my mother's life, she had suffered from dementia, and so she had forgotten a lot of things. She did not, however, forget three things in particular that, that I can recall. One, the taste of C's candy toffee chocolates. She would never forget the taste of those. Number two, she would always remember how much she loved my sisters and me, my two sisters and me. And number three, she would talk to anybody about how much she loved God, anybody who might listen. And so it would have been with, with the apostles as they experienced that light, the reassurance of Jesus transfigured before them. And that isn't the end of the story. As we go on in the gospel passage, we see that the three disciples are essentially alone with Jesus. Essentially, they are praying with Jesus. And so as we enter this second Sunday of Lent, that is our invitation to prayer, to almsgiving, to fasting, to spending a little bit more time with the light of Christ. We know that St. Ignatius of Loyola, in his examination of conscience, or the examine as we some hear, how sometimes hear it referred to, Ignatius talks about giving gratitude to God. That's a key component of this prayer, giving gratitude to God for the events of the past day. Who are the people that we've seen God show up in? What have been the events where we've seen God present? Finding God in all people and all things. So I wonder what that invitation looks like today for all of us as we pray. Maybe it's to see that transfiguration of Christ in those we love. Maybe to see our partner with a new glow. Maybe it's an invitation to pray for those who might not be on the top of our prayer list. Maybe those who annoy us, those who might be difficult. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's an acquaintance, maybe it's a family member but to bring them to God and to let God show us their goodness. Let God show us their goodness. And so as we continue on in Lent, let's remember the example of that incredible peace that we see among the three disciples. For me, my mom will always be an example of that peace and many others who have gone before us. Let's continue to hold God close to ourselves and to one another and continue in that peace. Let's pray in a special way for Audrey as she prepares for baptism, that she might know the transfigured Christ before her and that she might be part of the body of Christ as she moves forward in this life. Amen.
Before we baptize Audrey, I would like to ask all of those who are participating in the rite of Christian initiation of adults here at St. Ignatius to please stand, those who are here with us today, along with your sponsors. We are today going to bless all of you as you continue to seek God's will for your lives in the context of this community. I invite the community, although you remain seated, just to raise your hand with me if you wish to in pray for these, our sisters and brothers. Loving God, bless these pilgrims. Transform their hearts and minds. Draw them into the loving principles of your law. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we send forth our elect, those seeking baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, to reflect more deeply on the word of God. We offer them the book of the Gospels, and we ask that your teachers might help you to break it open. Please be assured of our loving support and prayers. We look forward to the day when you will share fully with us the table of the Lord. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, as we reflect on the transfiguration, when the disciples looked up in fear and saw only Jesus, let us pray for this child that she may always see Jesus who frees her heart from fear. Wesley and Wanda, you are called in a special way to welcome your child into this life of faith and hope. You are called to be the first and best of teachers, and we bless you and thank you for accepting this call. And God, parents, you assume a special responsibility to your Godchild, to show her a loving church, to be the face of Jesus for her as she grows. Members of this community, we have a role in the care of this child. We must love her as we have been loved, showing her that she is always welcome among us. We must offer her what Jesus offered Peter, James, and John, the promise and the call meant for all disciples. And so in solidarity with Audrey, let us stand together let us all profess our faith answering each of these questions, the questions of our baptism, and especially the godparents, with a big I do. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject all that leads you from light into darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the creator of the universe, who orders all things with love and wisdom? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, lived and died among us, was raised from the dead, and is now in the presence of God to return to us someday? I, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. My sisters and brothers, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. May Christ find us walking with Audrey in glory in this faith when he returns. Amen? Amen. 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 And now, my friends, renewed in the commitment of faith, we will turn to the font and, and bless it. I'm going to invite everyone to be seated. But if there are any children here who might want to help me bless the font, you'd be more than welcome to come up now. Anybody want to help me bless this? No? Come on up. Come on up. Don't be afraid. I haven't bitten anybody in a long time. <laughs> come on up, just come over here. And stand right next to the font and just put your hand over here. Because you're gonna, what we do is we hold our hand to indicate that we wanna call the Holy Spirit to bless this water. So hold your hand like that and I am gonna help you, you're gonna help me bless this water.
Come on around. You can come around. Come on. Over here. Do you want to come over here? Come over here. There you go. You can fit through there. Put your hand right there. Perfect. Loving God, you give us grace through sacramental signs. At the very beginning of creation, God breathed his spirit upon the waters and life came forth. Come on behind me. In the waters of the Red Sea, God set his people free. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and blessed by the Holy Spirit. And on the cross, water and blood flowed from his side, a sign to all of us of the gifts of the church given through baptism. And before he ascended to God, he asked that we go forward to all countries, all parts of the world, and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so loving God, here we go. We're not finished yet. Loving God, do you want to come up? Do you want to come up? Loving God, send your spirit upon the waters of this font. Dip in, dip your hands in, dip your hands in. May all those who enter the waters of baptism rise to new life. We ask this God, Father, Son, one more time, Holy Spirit. Can you put your hand, my, put your hand in my hand? There you go. And now bless yourselves. Since you've blessed this water, now bless yourselves. Take the water, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There you go, everybody. And if you come on up, you can bless yourself in the font. Put, dip your hand in the water. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There you go, buddy. Good job. And now you guys have been blessed and you've blessed this water and the baby will be blessed in the water that you help bless. So go back to your places and watch the rest of this baptism. We'll put your water to good use. <laughs> so Wesley and Wanda, is it your will that your daughter should be baptized in these waters and in the faith of the church that we have all professed with you? There you go. I'm glad you said yes. Then come to the waters. Come on. Can you take it? Oh, all right. Aubrey, who's got a glee? We baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get out of our eyes is where we want. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there we are. Yay! Okay. This sacred chrism reminds us that we are called together into the ministry of Christ, of Jesus who in his resurrection was anointed by the Holy Spirit as priest, prophet, and king. Today, Audrey is likewise anointed to make holy the world, to speak the truth, and to love all God's people. Audrey, the God of power and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and has brought you to new life through water and the Holy Spirit. The Lord now anoints you with the chrism of salvation that you might be united with God's people and remain forever a member of Christ who was anointed as prophet, priest, and king. Receive the light of Christ, whose servant you now are. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you, a light taken from the paschal candle of Christ, that you might, the child you have received has been ignited with a flame of love. You are charged to care for it, for all the world to see. May Audrey Uzgadagui 
keep the flame of faith alive in her heart so that when the Lord comes, she may go out to meet him, rejoicing with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen? Amen. My friends, let us welcome again our newest members. And let us all now stand and bring our prayers before our God. For the church, that like Abraham, the people of God flourish in unfamiliar places, sharing the joy and mercy of the gospel with all we encounter and serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all communities whose safety is threatened, we pray especially for Palestinians living in the occupied West Bank and for the people of Ukraine that leaders and citizens place human flourishing and compassion above all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For earth and all creatures, that the human family work together to live in relationship with fragile ecosystems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who have disabilities, that the Christian community help to foster places where everyone can develop their full potential, meeting God in themselves and in one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions written in the book at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and for all our beloved faithful departed, especially Dr. Louis Lesko and Anne Getty and Louisa Loxon that they be found rejoicing in the fullness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that as we fast, pray, and give alms, our hearts and minds be made fertile ground for the Holy Spirit, who sows among us the virtues of love, joy, peace, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, you sent your son Jesus to show us the way your love shines through all of us, through every person. Hear these prayers, transfigure us into a people who are both contemplative and active. Bless us and all your holy people through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to be seated. As you know, my friends, this is the time in our liturgy when we pass the basket. These financial gifts are the way we can minister as we minister in this world, as a parish, together. We are grateful to everyone who makes a financial contribution, grateful for your gifts. Know that every dollar you give helps support our work as a parish together. Those of us joining online will find a link in the chat for the Sunday collection at this time. Thank you for all your generosity. As our gifts are gathered and our table is prepared, join together in singing Transfigure Us, which can be found on page six of your order of worship.
Stand and pray with me, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty One. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May this sacrifice, O God, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Hol oh, sorry. You are indeed holy, O God, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O God, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh God, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ignatius and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh God, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our bishop, with all the bishops, all the women and men who minister in your name, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, as God's own people, let us sing out with one voice the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. That by the power of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples to us, peace I leave with you, peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And before we come to this table of mercy and hope, let us remember those at home who pray with us. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken, the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist, Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ, the church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence. Let us be united with you at this moment so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions we may manifest you and love others as you love us. Amen. May the body and blood of Christ bring all people to eternal life. As we are united through the body and blood of the Lord, joined together singing in the breaking of the bread, which can be found on page 12 of your order of worship.
As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O God, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now in the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, a few announcements in this Lenten season. In addition to our Saturday afternoon uh, rite of reconciliation, we offer now an extra time on Wednesdays during the season of Lent. On Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., you can come to the church, receive the sacrament of uh, reconciliation. Stations of the Cross will be prayed on Fridays at 9.30 a.m., uh, right after daily Mass. There were some copies, and I think we still have, we'll, we'll put out some more of the stations. If you'd like to do them yourself, please leave them there for other people to use after you're finished. Uh, please, young adults will gather for brunch on this Sunday at 1115 in the parish kitchen. You can meet in front of the pulpit after mass to walk over together, or you can go over on your own. Join us on March 12th after the 10 a.m. mass for a talk by Chris White, who is the Vatican correspondent for the National Catholic Reporter, and Joe Ferru Ferrulo, excuse me, who is the NCR CEO and publisher. The title of their talk is Pope Francis, 10 Years On, What Lies Ahead? You can pick up your Catholic Relief Services rice bowls at any of the entrances to the church. The rice bowl is a wonderful tradition which allows us to help people around the world just by putting in your change during this Lenten season. If you gave up something for Lent, maybe give what, that, what the price of that is into the rice bowl and it will help uh, especially children around the world. On March 11th or 12th, we will be, March 11th and 12th, I should say, we will be collecting items for our local food pantry, which provides groceries and snack bags to those at risk of food insecurity. Drop off individually wrapped, non-perishable fruit cups or full-size jars of creamy, not crunchy, peanut butter at the Parker Avenue doors after the masses. Uh, the cutoff for dropping things off will be 6 p.m. so that we can make sure they get to the people. St. Ignatius is in the middle of our annual appeal to raise 
the $840,000 we need for the day-to-day -day operations of the church, for maintaining ordinary things, not just the, the big construction project, but this is for the day-to-day -day annual appeal. So please, uh, anything you can give is much, much appreciated. If you've received a letter from Father Greg regarding your contribution, we hope you'll be able to make a generous gift. If you haven't received a letter, if you go on the website and uh, just press under uh, the annual appeal, you'll be able to get something there. And for our live stream viewers, the link can be found in the chat. Thank you for this continuing generosity. My sisters and brothers, before we go forth, I'd like to invite uh, Audrey's parents, Wesley and Wanda, to stand. My friends, parenting, no, just, you can stand in your seats, just where you are, in your seat. You don't have to come up here. You'd, you've, you've made this trek enough. Just stand where you are. You're probably tired with that little one. Parenting is a sacred mystery that goes back to the beginning of the human family. Parents collaborate with God in the ministry of life, and love their children on our behalf. So I ask these parents to open their hearts now to bow their heads and receive the blessing of this community. And I ask all of us now to stand. And especially those of you who are parents or godparents, you know what it is. And so open your hearts and bless these people as I bless them aloud. Life-giving God, you bring joy to mothers and fathers through Jesus Christ, the child of the Virgin Mary. Bless Wesley and Wanda and nurture them with gifts of wisdom and hope. May they become the first and best of teachers for their child, bearing witness to courage, to mercy, and to passionate love in all they say and do. And as they give thanks for the life of their child, may they be united with her in your presence forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God continue to bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. As we go forth, join together in singing God of Day and God of Darkness, which can be found on page 13 of your Order of Worship. Please return your order of worship to the cubbies near the doors as you depart from the church. strong and true. 